Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio, kind of talking to you from the field. We're on a field trip, you might say. Uh, Sherry and I are actually traveling. Uh, We left Arizona a few days ago. I drove all the way up to the Washington State area. And then Sherry, uh, three days later, flew up to Washington to meet me. Uh, We had a couple of projects we were working on in Oregon. I had to pick up my uh, canopy for my truck. And we're shopping up here for some items. And we also had a chance to meet some people. So stay tuned. I'll tell you more. Well, I want to start the show off by apologizing for the sound quality. I told you I was on the field. I'm actually in a motel room, and I'm not using my studio microphone. So it's a microphone I used to use in the beginning of days uh, last year, and it will suffice for this show. And I, and I, I understand uh, it's very sensitive. It will actually pick up a lot of sounds away from where I'm working at. So Cinder is with me. You might hear her call her a little bit. And I do have the door open, and you might hear other people in the background. So I do apologize, but we're trying our best to be able to still do a show and be on the road. I've actually, uh, for the week right after I did the last show, I've been not at the RV. I've actually been driving. And I've actually driven, you won't believe this, I've almost driven 2,000 miles (laughs) In in, what, six days. Wow. So... A lot of that first 15 to 1700 was getting all the way to Washington, but uh, doing some of the business we're taking care of up here, and uh, we've ended up going all the way up to the Bellevue, Washington area, and back to the South Seattle area, back and forth a few times. So that's adding on the mileage too. And uh, we'll tell you more about that in some of the other shows, but I did want to take the time to tell you who we ran into. Just just before this show, I uh, uh, we had lunch with Aaron and Lori uh, Jimerson from Three Tails RV, and they live in their RV here in uh, Federal Way, Washington. And uh, once again, their website is called ThreeTailsRV.com, and they've also got a YouTube channel. And he makes very good informational videos about RV living and and projects, and he's very good at. Um, making them short and sweet and to the point and very informative. So when you get the opportunity, write this down, get a piece of paper and some pa- um, a pen and write down three, the number three, tailsrv.com and go check their site out. It's worth it. Nice, nice people. And by the way, we did meet at our favorite place down here in Kent, Washington called Caveman Kitchen, which makes, I swear, that the best sandwiches... Uh, They've been around forever, and if you lived in Kent, everybody knows where this place is, but uh, whenever we get in this area, the first thing we always do is make sure and get a sandwich, whether it's their barbecued chicken, oh, good stuff, and they make a really good uh, uh, French dip that is over the top. So if you get a chance and you're in Kent, Washington, go to Caveman Kitchen, and they didn't even have to pay me to say that. <laughs> I think they've been around for 35, 40 years now. So anyway, I want to thank Aaron and uh, Lori for meeting us for lunch. Uh, I'll put a, try to remember put a link down in the description. I only have a few hours to get this show done, so I'm <laughs> kind of, might be a little bit Mickey Mouse, but, and graphics might be kind of light, but uh, we did get the show out, so I'm really happy about that. So thanks for listening, people. We know how important it is to make sure that we're uh, timely and we always have our shows on time. And I hope you appreciate that. So let's move on. So before I begin, I I forgot to announce that this is episode 57. Yep, 57. And I normally say that at the beginning of the show, but like I said, I'm out in the field, so I don't have my normal stuff in front of me. So one of the things I wanted to talk about on this trip up is really 
the significance of owning an RV and, and you've heard us talking about boats and stuff like that. And I want to apply this to the fact that if, if you have a boat that you can live on or stay in overnight or an RV, whether you're camping or full-time or part-time uh, RVer, it all the same. And what I want to really talk about is the cost of motels. Yeah, um, they are outrageous. Uh, we, well, if you go up to Washington State and get up towards the bar border, we're constantly finding actu actually no availability at all from Bellevue all the way to Everett. And if you know the Washington State area, it's like, are you kidding me? And then when the, uh, because of uh, the software isn't out there and uh, uh, supply and demand, the average cost was 160 to 260 dollars a day. Then if you have a pet, find pet friendly, uh, add 20, 25 dollars on top of the cost to cover your pet, and you've got some significant money going out the door if you're going vacationing anywhere. And I have to laugh because my, my daughter's kind of setting up a trip for us uh, to do some stuff over in a, near the Grand Canyon uh, on the three-day weekend. And she first notes, she goes, I can't believe how much motels cost. And that brings me to the point. The RV, the boat, the camper, whatever you have. And, and before we were living in our RV full-time, nothing beats the fact that you can take an RV and especially doing off season even is even better but during any season you can set up your RV at your favorite place that you like to go with your family and set it up on monthly services or a monthly lot and you get a discount for that so the average cost I'm gonna say is gonna be around five hundred to seven hundred dollars a month and there's exceptions to that depending on where you're at and etc let's say that number well, I already told you how much motels are. So all you have to do is stay in a motel two to three times in one month and you've paid the same amount. Really. Yet, wouldn't it be nice if every weekend after work, if you're working couples or have family, you can just hop in the car and probably you know, fight the traffic like everybody else does and get to your favorite destiny at, and you, you don't have to be in a hurry and you don't have any uh, anxiety other than the traffic because when you get there your RV or your boat that you have set up already in a marina that's livable that you can sleep in and, and maybe cook a few meals uh, is there waiting for you and oh, I just can't emphasize enough how sweet that is for keeping your sanity as a nine to five working family where you have a place to escape that's affordable a good little RV can be any shape and size as long as you have comfy beds a little uh, bathroom and a place to cook and uh, watch TV when you want to and everything is there so when you get there it feels like your house and the same thing with your boat whether it's a sailboat or powerboat People up in Washington a lot of times set up boats that are moored for like $300 a month up in Anacortes, and it's different. There's you know, San Diego is as high as $1,000 a month, but still the numbers work. Well, you can go to uh, well, San Diego is just as expensive place to live anyway. So, hey, to have rent for $1,000 a month, having a secondary vacation home of a boat, or you can set up your RV in that area probably for around $600 a month. What a bargain. What a way to go for a second escape home. And with the kind of schedules people are keeping and the, and the long work hours everyone's doing, having a place to escape, this is the way to do it. I don't know what's causing motels to go off the Richter scale with prices, but I think it has to do a lot with the internet and algorithms. So what's going on is like, for example, all these motels are all tying in through Trivago or Hotels.com, etc. And what happens is if the demand is high, the software knows it and it starts pushing the prices up. And then if there's a lot of uh, demand and very little uh, accommodations, the prices go higher and higher. You, you can get back on the internet on the following, say, Monday or Tuesday after a weekend and see the prices are almost cut 40 or 50 percent lower than they were coming closer to the weekend. 
And in the old days, I never took place because there was no software and algorithms to do this. So consumers like us, <coughs> excuse me, are just getting hammered. And because uh, when I was driving up here, when I was in like Fallon, I was able to get a motel room for like $71 plus Cinder's uh, d um, deposit, about 90 bucks. And I'm, I, I can live with that. It's still high, I think, but um, that's because it was a small town and very little demand, and the room was decent. Same thing in Redmond, Oregon. Uh, we stopped there. I, th I think I paid about the same amount with a pet deposit, just under 100 I see I paid $171 for two nights, and that's with the pet deposit. So anyway, <coughs> it's just uh, using an RV using a boat um, or buying a small tiny house and putting it somewhere out in the boonies where you can get away with it then uh, hey you should do it if you want to keep your sanity and still pay the bills there you go so first of all I want to thank people who write into us and give us uh, comments uh, good bad or indifferent um, we always urge you guys to please get uh, go to our website at uh, rvtalkradio.com and go to the contact page. Um, if you really want to um, uh, uh, hit me with something that you feel is uh, something you got to tell me, you can also go to our message uh, buttons on our Facebook or uh, uh, also at YouTube and keep it confidential and really uh, write to me. So anyway, I did have a viewer... Um, uh, contact me last week and really, really mad at me. Really mad. And in fact, he said, I'm unsubscribing. I'm just really mad. <laughs> and really went after me saying, I am not an RVer. I'm not, I don't represent RV life and living and uh, the RV lifestyle. And because we've done shows that are about sailing or we hopped on an airplane and we went to Texas and uh, we do other things and so and I appreciate that I, I totally understand that but uh, first of all RV talk radio is about real RV life this isn't fake and so let me tell you and this, this I can you go to any RV park you tell me which one that you've seen a variation from this and ask yourself, what is everybody doing in this RV park? Are they picking up and traveling every day or every week or every month to a new destiny? Are they, um, you know, coming in, filling up their tanks and running out the door? It's like, and, and so you might talk with one to two people. Really ask yourself, what's going on in these RV parks? So you tell me what's real RV life is real RV life getting in the car moving every other week picking up all your equipment and going from location to location or is RV life actually using the RV and that's that's where I'm at and so I'm I, I was a little perturbed on that and I apologize I don't let a lot of people get under my skin but that was not appropriate at all because most people are using their RVs for a resource, a service, a resource, a part of their lives. And Sherry and I live, and these are people that write to us and they're living in a house or apartment and say, well, we might retire and we're going to go travel a little bit. And, and it's not that easy. And some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, it sounds so good to get in the RV and say, I'm going to travel, travel, travel. But there's a real life out there. There's people with limitations. There's people with uh, limitations in health, limitations in finance, limitation in equipment, limitations to family um, responsibilities. Maybe they have an elderly family or member or something. Whether they want to stay by their grandkids. Everybody is different. But how can I tell any of those people that they do not represent the RV lifestyle? I can't because it's different and so that's my point and I just wanted to bring that up 
Now, the thing with me and Sherry is like uh, we got hung up at a particular location uh, in Arizona. And so we're not traveling. So we're not really doing a lot of travel videos about the RV. The other thing is, is like, oh, normally, and some of this email I got was normally, Rob, you show some tips or anything. And this is where I kind of say, guys, I'm not a, this is not the RV show of how to live without all kinds of stuff. Um, there's people out there being minimalists and all that stuff. And I respect that and keeping costs down. But uh, I also, I guess I'm talking, I want to say I represent the middle class, might say RVer. I ex like the fact that I have money in my pocket to buy tickets to go to Texas or I want to go on a particular uh, kind of trip. And the reason we can do that is because we chose the RV not to be minimalist, but to reduce our overhead and as we get older you don't make as much income and once again I'm going to remind you I do have people in the background and sounds and I apologize um, but anyway uh, I'm just glad that we're able to get a show out so our channel represents the fact that we respect the minimalist living and if you want to live on a, a shoestring budget and try to just get by great power to you but we are a couple that like amenities we like health care we like the fact that I uh, we don't have to depend on others we really don't have to depend on donations uh, we like to get them because it's kind of just helps but we're not um, expecting you to pay our way we pay our own way uh, when we get asked for the, someone to be a patron or b to uh, support us, it's more of a tip jar. Just saying thank you and helping us um, take the sting away a little bit. But an RV and an RV lifestyle that Sherry and I live allows us to enjoy life at 55 with enough money to go places and travel and it may and travel, but without the RV uh, to anywhere we want to go. And thank God we have an RV to live in that we're very comfortable, feels like a normal house. It's kind of extravagant. I'm not living in a van. I would never ask my wife to live in a van like that. We're not trying to down uh, make our lives worse. We want our lives to be comfortable and quality. And that's what the RV does for Sherry and I. So I really get a little perturbed with someone who says, Rob, you, you don't represent the RV lifestyle. You're flying places and going places. I beg to differ. <laughs> Grr. I suggest that the RV is a resource, if you use it right, can allow you the ability to do things that you've never had a chance to do before because you've been strapped strapped by cash for normal living living in a house with mortgages and the utilities and the property taxes and etc which most of us do and, and and there's nothing wrong with that but if you want to say gosh i'd like to go to texas so gosh i'd like to go to hawaii i'd like to take a cruise wouldn't it be nice to lighten up your cash a little bit and the way we did it was we chose an rv to do that and we have the flexibility to go anywhere we need to go, especially if Sherry's job requires us to, her to, uh, to do that kind of work that she does in a different location. No big deal. We just pack it on up and head to the new location. The RV is a blessing, and it's our RV life. It's our RV lifestyle. And so uh, for that person that wrote that, well, he's not subscribed to me anymore, but I got a feeling he's going to hear us again. And this is my answer to your letter saying, I'm sorry you unsubscribed, and I always hate it when something like that happens. But we represent RV lifestyle of the majority, the people that are using an RV for a resource and not gallivanting all over the United States. Now, I want to be one of those gallivanters eventually, but it's not going to happen till probably age 65 when Sherry and I 
can get Medicare and then just do supplemental income, um, not supplemental income, supplemental insurance along with that. Then we have the freedom to go where we like to go. And probably the last thing I wanted to make sure and address on that one email I got, and I'm not mad at the person where I'm like, grr, I never want to talk to them, but it's this a lot of times when we get written to it's one-sided and they just don't understand uh, why we do what we do. And so <coughs> I expanded our channel especially for the fact that uh, because, thank God, of the RV, we can now do a lot of outdoor activities we've never done before. That's why we changed the channel name to the YouTube to Outdoor Travel Channel. So now we can have all of our RV stuff, and whenever we have RV tips, um, we'll definitely still be putting those on RV Travel Quest and RV Travel Buddy. But RV Travel Channel represents what everything you can do outdoors or traveling beyond just the RV. And the basis for the whole thing is the fact that we are in an RV. So I rest my case on that. So. Um, I hope that I'm not trying to sound negative or anything. I'm just saying that I don't expect your RV experience to be exactly like mine. And I, and I don't expect you to try to be a minimalist living. And, when, and the only time that we really do RV shows is when we think we're using a tool or a resource a lot different than you say it might be different from your household. A uh, particular cooking device or a particular... Uh, uh, product that we're using we'll do a feature on that and um, but uh, the other thing I really wanted to talk about was your RV in the first place the point being is somebody else said well you used to do all kinds of RV tips and things well when our RV was new which always happens it seems like things break and then if you also buy a used RV that's down the road they'll break all the time too so I'm not bragging but my RV's not broke I've got a good RV and I urge you to get a good RV too. So uh, if you're middle class and can afford a, a good RV with a warranty or extended warranty, I would highly recommend that's the route you go. Do you buy used? Well, sure you could, but make sure you also have the extended warranties and things like that. Um, but if you're going to buy older and older and then maybe you don't have that kind of income, I certainly understand why uh, RV tips and RV repair uh, RV um, uh, stories would be critical to you but I'm also telling you that if you can buy newer you should if you should uh, if you, you should spend a little extra money for your RV and I'm not going to apologize that we're a middle class income family and that is the majority of the people out there is that kind of family and those kind of people there's everybody's stories different sometimes they've lost their husband or wife their uh, or spouse I'll say um, some people like I said have health issues and can't drive anymore but they're still in an RV some are temporary nurses or doing contract work and stuff in different areas you go to Anacortes there's tons of people using their RVs for contract work for the refinery and so that is what we are talking about on this show the majority and when we can talk about the little special things you can do with RVing when your income allows when your profession allows you to travel good for you know, good for you and do it and we want to hear your stories and and we'll follow along with you because we know we won't be able to do it like you are you would be the exception to the rule. Those shows you watch them where people are traveling uh, in an RV and they're a younger couple, they have an extreme situation that allows them to do that. The majority of people cannot do that. Then there's the other kind that travel around and do kind of a work camping kind of thing. Well, that's fine if you don't mind doing that kind of stuff, but you're really just going to an RV park to work. Yeah, you get to go to the locations you want to be and you get breaks and stuff. If that works for you, that's great. That's how it should be. And, and, if, and if you're happy that uh, uh, living like that, great. And some people are traveling out there with kids and stuff. Um, there's 
pros and cons to that where you're doing homeschooling and the fact that really you don't have that much of a stable environment um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, military families have dealt with that for years. But that's got its pros and cons. Once again, it's the exception to the rule. Those are the five or ten percent of the of the RVing po uh, population that are doing that kind of stuff. And I mean, Sherry, once again, will constantly lean towards the majority because that's what Sherry and I are: is a working family, uh, at least half of us, uh, and half retired, and doing work on the side. And a nine to five job, which was a wife, I'll just describe it that way, is, is what my wife and I do. And, and we try to tell you that, thank goodness, the RV we have was allow us to do this. And the other thing is we've been introducing sailing or boating to our agenda. And thank goodness we have an RV to allow us to do those activities we've discovered that I think we're still going to be working class people till we're 65 like I said so now that we kind of face that reality we're getting you might say toys or things that are fun for us to report about to extend our channel beyond just uh, what we're doing in the RV and making shows about it and so now we can include um, trips to um, Texas or Hawaii or going to Washington like we are right now and we may be introducing a boat soon here about um, shortly uh, there is something going on on that and we'll introduce a whole bunch of new shows about also uh, including boating and it's all under the umbrella of, of RVing I certainly hope if you are in, are in an RV and you are traveling a little bit, I am assuming that you're going kayaking. I'm assuming you might be doing some hiking. I assume you might be doing some trips. Maybe I'll go uh, visiting. Maybe you take a flight to another country. Or maybe you take a, a cruise somewhere. Please go do that while you can. And, and I certainly should not brand you as not an RVer not a RV life or not RV lifestyle. I am tickled pink that you, uh, all of you that showed us RV lifestyle and showed us all the things you're doing because you're an RVer is why I RV and is, and is why Sherry and I RV is for the abilities to live life to its fullest. And if you want to live your life to the fullest and reduce your cost and enjoy life a little bit, you should be an RV lifestyle person like me and Sherry. I rest my case. Okay, so enough belly aching. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Got a little bit more ranting to do. <laughs> and these are, I, and thank gosh, somebody wrote letters to us to either, you know, uh, perturb me or whatever, which in a good way they did it and they did it very tactfully by the way and so the next thing I want to address is uh, one person well actually two things the other thing is they mention is it seems like your channel is all about you and Sherry and the answer is uh, yeah <laughs> it is it is about me and Sherry <laughs> as me and Sherry are sharing our lives with you every day every week all the time we're sticking cameras in our faces taking you places and stuff so and and it's uh, and and so what we're trying to do is share our lives with you to give you an idea for things that you might like to do and it, you won't do it the same way me and Sherry is but but it is it is Sherry's in my life that we're showing you and ours is pretty realistic uh, we don't we uh, are not uh, we don't go into details like I'm not taking you to Costco places and all the shopping we do and we don't take you to the laundromat and we don't take you to those. I figured you kind of know how to do that and I know you've shopped in a Home Depot before so I, um, we assume that you know those things so what we show you is what we think might be a little unusual 
or uh, something we'd like to share with you that you might be a place that you might want to go and you can see how we did it and you might get some laughs out of the things that we might have goofed up and uh, uh, wait till you see all these videos that come in from uh, uh, the trip up here to Washington and back and and it's being documented every day of the mileage and what we're doing and there's some things going on that because of the sequence of uh, is I already know the answers to some of the things that those videos are going to uh, start producing and I can't reveal to you exactly what's happening here in Washington to the detail but there's some fun things like having a chance to meet up with Three Tails RV just made me and Sherry's day big time. We, we've been in, we've talked to each other so much and been a Skype and all that that to have the opportunity to meet each other. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do some more things with them, uh, with the show and also while I'm up here. But it'd be, uh, depending on how the cards um, come out. But uh, what a great friendship we've uh, gotten through our being and. Uh, um, I, I really urge you to take the time to subscribe to their channel. Uh, there there are veers just like us working nine to five. They are our veers. They are living the RV lifestyle. So yes, our channel is about me and Sherry, and I'm proud of that. And uh, what it is is we're sharing our experiences, showing you products we use showing you how we get things done and how we are able to live because we have an RV. And we're going to show you some other things because of the RV that you can do. And uh, hopefully our videos and our radio show will give you um, insight to what you might be doing in the future or what you're already doing. Or maybe you want to give us suggestions of things that Sherry and I could do. Uh, that would fit in with our lifestyle uh, of being a working class RVers. So anyway, uh, yep, it is all about us. Well, I, um, I'm going to keep on with a couple more answers to some of the message I got. And, and one of the last ones I want to bring up, and, and, and I know we talk about it a lot, and I actually ended up talking about it again, was uh, is Sherry and I have, have complained about health care. And really, that's our ball and chain. So we really thought that once we got on the road and, and living minimalist life, that we could go travel more. And realities were kicking in this and being after 55, and we have a pension coming, and well, we have one, uh, the realities is we started um, getting ready to do the health care thing and uh, turned out it was very, very expensive. So the person that wrote to me says, you know, I bring that up a lot and I do, I do. And suck it up is basically what they told me. Suck it up. Get your health care, pay for it, suck it up. And it's like, great. But uh, my point is that I'm trying to enjoy the golden years and losing one thousand dollars or more a month and we're not we don't have health issues um it just perturbs me and i i think my biggest argument is is it just seems like we as seniors i'll say shouldn't be getting punished like this because this new obamacare we've discovered is wonderful if I want to live a minimalist life and minimal income and uh, live on a shoestring budget that program will save me money and I could get insurance cheap but if I make too much money and I don't make a lot but I make a middle-class income between us and Sh me and Sherry we are punished with very very high monthly rates for this care that's only uh, basically you can can't you can get a national care but it's based out of each uh, state so really to get your major stuff done you have to keep returning to your own state if you're going to enjoy this one thousand dollars or more and uh, that would be also with a deductible of like six six thousand dollars or more and so yet all these other folks that may be 
uh, unemployed or not trying to work or uh, uh, gallivanting around on a minimal lifestyle and getting donations from people and that stuff, they can walk in and get almost free health care. And so I'm, I'm really trying to wave a flag that this health care thing is broken. And uh, I, I don't talk about politics much, but um, I, I really, to me, at this age, when the people that are running for president talk, and we won't go there, <laughs> I am listening for one thing only, is what are they going to do about health care? And are they making sure that our Social Security is going to come? And the closer I get to those golden years, the more that that's more important to me. And sure. So I bring the subject up a lot. And, 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 and it's also to uh, hopefully hear ideas from people like you um, that are dealing with it. And I can guarantee you that you may watch some of these RV channels and they're all out, out gallivant and have especially these youngins and stuff and what you don't see is what's really going on out there they actually may not even have health care but you know they're also young and don't have to worry about things as much some people just walk into emergency and they don't have a dime to their name and not pay their bills and they still get the service that uh, they don't turn anybody away at these at the emergencies and stuff. So, you know, there's things that you're not seeing, and I'm we're telling you the truth that we want to be above board. We always have been, and so when it comes to health care or income or, or doing things right or having extended warranties and being safe, we truly mean it and we truly preach it and we walk the talk. Oh, everybody, I, I, didn't mean, I guess this is more of a ranting uh, episode than anything, and I apologize. Uh, you know we love you. But anyway, I also want to uh, thank you guys for being patient with the sound quality this time. Yes, Cinder's been in the background. She just got her dinner. That was her in the background making noise. And, uh, she's a very happy dog, and you can hear right now her collar uh, is rattling. And Yeah, yeah, and she's always got to do it during the show. Of course so it's real life people real RVers real travelers and so circumstances will not always be perfect and then today is one of those days I am just happy that I'm able to get a show out to you uh, up in Kent Washington we're in a, a motel up here and Sherry's doing laundry and she's actually trying not to interfere with the show but she's actually having trouble with the machines and stuff and has been sneaking in and out trying to be quiet while i was trying to get the show it's been quite cute and then why and that's why we've been married for 36 years so also i was going to mention that uh, our uh, anniversary is coming up we will be married 36 years on august 26 so hey just keep piling them up and uh sherry and i actually met each other when we we're seven years old and and then uh, dated in high school, got married at age 19, didn't have children till we were 21, believe it or not. And uh, so we've been together for a long time. So uh, we get in each other's nerves and stuff, and we uh, get through it all the time, hard times, good times. And uh, so she supports me really well on my projects, and I always try to support her best in making sure, like especially with her job and career, that she's comfortable She's doing what she likes to be doing, and if I have to be in Arizona while she's doing it, uh, so be it. We're making that we're making that happen. But um, I certainly wouldn't want her to be doing something, or, or especially at this age, career-wise. Why, uh, since I've retired, um, <coughs> that she uh, she's comfortable and she gets the best of everything. And when she wants to go on vacation and get the heck out of her. By golly, we're gonna go. She's worked hard to do it, and uh, we've we've all worked hard to do it. So, anyway, we uh, uh, yeah, it's we'll come along pretty good. And uh, once again, I want to th thank everybody for those who donate and, and give us a, a support tips, and uh, we're hoping they start getting a patron uh, uh, account going, uh, which we already have, and uh, which will allow us to kind of do some special gifting to those people. 
uh, as I was explained in the show before, it's not about the uh, making money off this. It's all about tips and support and allowing us to maybe buy better and better stuff than just average Joe. And maybe I don't have to use a cheaper microphone when I'm traveling. <laughs> anyway, we are appreciative. We're not begging. And, and I made it clear to you, we're not hurting. You're not making my income. You're helping our resources and, and, and making things better. And, uh, and, and so it's a way to say thank you in another way. So anyway, if it sounded like any, if it ever sounds like anything like, oh my gosh, my transmission's broken, I'm stuck in the middle of the desert, oh my God, send uh, uh, donations, you'll never get that from us. Uh, we just want uh, um, our patrons and our uh, people that donate to us, uh, that we, we'll get, you know, in, in return, we'll do some special things for you, but you know, and it will always be that what we produce for you will always be free to you. Um, all of our videos, all of our uh, uh, podcasts, uh, they're there they're for the taking. We enjoy doing them. Um, and we just have those other tools there that allow you to give us a special thank you if we're doing a good job. So anyway, let's just leave it at that, guys. And uh, <laughs> time to move on to another subject. So before I go today, I want to talk about your driving. <laughs> yep, yours. Not mine. Yours. <laughs> Mine's flawless. <laughs> Not. Anyway, you know, all the way up here, I can't imagine how many people must be on a suicide pack of some, of some sort. It, and I, it happened to me, I'll tell you about three, three times it happened to me, especially between Las Vegas and Reno, where some people were so desperate to pass that they would go into the other lane and put their pedal to the metal to try to pass a semi truck or something, which was already doing 60, and literally put their lives on the line to do a head on collision with somebody like me coming the other direction. Three times, if not four times, that I literally had to slow down and, and move over to the shoulder because someone was on a uh, uh, mission to pass a truck and actually put their lives on the line to get around that truck, even if it co would cause a head-on collision and they it would die. Most of them were little cars and I was driving a truck. I might have survived it better than them. But I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I can imagine it happened once, maybe twice, but three or four times. Uh, people, when you get in a car, why do you want to die? <laughs> I mean, why do you let people get under your skin so much? Why does getting from point A to B in a couple more seconds faster or a minute faster worth your life? and the people are in the car with you. Why can't you look at a vehicle? I don't care if it's an RV or a regular car or truck, whatever, or boat. Is Why can't you look at it of this wonderful tool called a car or a boat or an airplane can get you from point A to point B alive and safely uh, as long as we follow the rules. And, and if all of us follow the rules the best we can, that's all you can ask for, especially with such high populations. If we all would just try to follow the rules, don't have to be in such a hurry. And how many times have you passed me and come to a red light and I'm right on your tail waving at you going, was it worth putting your life on the line so now you're in front of me, yet I'm still right behind you? Was it really worth that? So I don't, know, I don't know what magic words I could say to get people to realize that life is precious and why does it not seem precious to you when you're in a vehicle? And it's not everybody's that way, but I, some people just get in a car or vehicle and turn into monsters. And I don't understand why. And even people driving RVs will be there's some of them get going and you wonder, oh my God, how are you going to drive that thing like that? But 
I mean, but most RVers are so terrified of the fact they're so big that they really are cautious people and are really pretty good drivers. And then, but not everyone, and that's not always true. But uh, really, guys, how can I word something about driving what, that would cause you to second guess that do I really have to pass this person right now? Um, are they really going so much slower that it's going to make my head explode? <laughs> if, what can I say to you that would say your life is worth that extra minute, that extra 30 seconds to get to the store, get the work, whatever it is, than finding yourself um, laid out in the middle of the concrete with your arms and legs in different lanes? Um, I don't know. I just, I guess maybe it's getting older. Because I know when I was younger, I was rambunctious on the road and impatient. But now, especially at this age, I just want to get from A to B alive in a timely manner. Um, so if I'm going on a 55 highway and I got someone that's doing 45, yes, I will pass that person. But not to engage it to danger. I will pass if it's appropriate. Otherwise, I'm going to just live with 45 because I'm sitting back there going, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still moving forward. I'm still alive. And I'm and I, I'm going to get to B eventually. And I may be a little later now, but I am not going to stick my neck out and get myself killed and not be able to see my grandkids and my daughter and my son and their grandkids and my wife and my pets and all that because I just had to pass that car. <laughs> so hopefully anything I just said helps any of you guys second guess yourself about your driving safety and road rage and things like that. I pray, I hope that I said something in this last segment that makes you stay alive a little bit longer <laughs> on the road. <laughs> So that's all I have to say about that. Sorry, guys. Well, that concludes this week at the podcast. I uh, apologize for the audio. Like I said before, I had to use a microphone that it was easy to carry in a suitcase. And I'm just grateful that I found a place and some quiet time to do this show. Yes, there's sound in the background, and I apologize, but it's just real. It's real stuff here. And uh, I know it was a lot of ranting, and uh, um, some of it's because I asked you guys to send us notes and give us your opinion, and I do appreciate that. Uh, if you think I'm going to be uh, not respond one way or another, um, uh, you have another thing coming. But uh, I do want you to make sure and let us know what you're thinking especially this show i'm sure i've, I've stirred some feathers and uh i hope in a good way or positive uh we want to hear from you so once again go to rv talk radio go to contact page give us a shout out there uh or you can uh, email me directly at rob at rv talk and of course you go to our facebook pages of rv talk radio or rv travel buddy you can use the message button at the top of facebook and that will come right to my uh, cell phone. So, yeah, give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we might even bring your subject up on the show like you saw we did on this show. So I want to urge everybody to please be safe out there. And, and you've heard what I've said about driving. Get from A to B in one piece. I'd really appreciate that. That's what I'm trying to do. Stay alive for my family. And... Uh, Ask yourself, really, what is RV lifestyle? What is RV life? What is RV travel? It's us, all of us. We all do it differently. And uh, how you do it, uh, you may be doing a minimal way. You may be middle class. Maybe you've got a million dollar machine. Hey, great. Um, the big part is uh, what can we share together? to allow us all to be great RVers and to be safe and how to uh, uh, address resources and services that might benefit all of us. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your comments and feedback. And thank you 
for being here this week and I hope to hear from you and, and listen and have you listen to us next Monday and we're here every Monday and look forward to seeing us on episode 58 next week so guys see ya bye thank you for watching our videos please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter there is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.